Hi, if you're looking for some of the nicest neighborhoods in Colorado Springs as a potential place to live, you've come to the right place. And every week we do a new video examining another part of Colorado Springs, one thing or another. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you get reminders. And don't forget, people are coming from all over the country to move to Colorado Springs. It's a wonderful, beautiful city. And uh, so we look forward to uh, getting uh, a call or an email from you. I love to help people out. Today, we're going to look at five different neighborhoods. We're going to go from north to south. And the first one is going to be called Peregrine, named after the world's fastest raptor. It's been clocked at over 200 miles an hour crashing down on birds below it. And uh, this neighborhood is bordered on the north end by 10 square miles of mostly open space. It's also known as the US Air Force Academy. And on the west by part of Pike National Forest with trails going right up into the hillside right out of your neighborhood. So this is a beautiful area. And I'll show you some of the homes that are here. Uh, there's a lot of open space built in here, trails everywhere, um, lots of deer. So be careful if you want to have a garden. That might be a drawback. You'll have to deal with the deer. Um, but that's kind of fun. This is a park in the Peregrine neighborhood. You can see that uh, a lot of the houses along here are large and fairly close together and they climb up the hills and they have the Air Force Academy to the north of them and the forest to the west of them. So it's a pretty nice neighborhood. If you like the outdoors, I was just up in this park the other day. Lots of uh, nice little trails up here. Demoiselles, a, a geological formation that uh, are pretty fun to look at. And uh, behind this tree, I'll move over a little bit, is uh, the place we were just looking at a few moments ago. So if you're looking for a place with deer around, probably, close access to the mountains, um, a bit away from the highway, but close enough, uh, this may be an area you might want to look at. And um, this is in the Academy School District 20 an award-winning school district. Actually, I used to teach in it. And uh, so that's something that I've always been proud of. So Peregrine, a wonderful neighborhood at the far north end on the west side of I-25. Next, we'll head south to Mountain Shadows. Again, right up against the hillside. And in 19, or I'm sorry, 2012 in June, the Waldo Canyon fire came roaring over the top of these hills and took out many homes and uh, left uh, just a bunch of scarred trees up on the ridgeline. I'll show you a bit of that. In June of 2012, the Waldo Canyon fire came over the top of this ridge. You can see the sticks that were left behind. and. Uh, came right over here, took out several hundred homes in this neighborhood. And it has since been rebuilt. A lot of them, of course, got missed, but it was a major episode in our city's history. There are lots of uh, beautiful homes here as well. Larger lots than we saw in Peregrine as a rule and uh, great views overlooking the city and down across the prairie. So that's Mountain Shadows. Next we'll move down south uh, to downtown and just on the north side of downtown about a mile north just north of Colorado College is an area called the Old North End. This is a very stately neighborhood flat wide streets and a very protective owners association. If you're going to do any upgrades to your outside of your house. Make sure you're following their strict guidelines. Um, in the 1890s, uh, when the gold mines at Cripple Creek on the west side of Pikes Peak were in full bloom, there was a lot of 
uh, people who were able to make a fair amount of money and build these beautiful two to three story Victorians uh, in an old North End. And uh, that's what I'll show you some of those. Again, nice broad streets. And um, in the 20s, the style turned towards arts and crafts homes and bungalows. So you'll see a mix of those too. But again, a very beautiful high-end neighborhood, just about a mile north of downtown. If you go about a mile west of downtown, you come to old Colorado City. Now, Colorado City was formed 12 years before Colorado Springs was, and it was a wild rootin' tootin' place. Uh, had a lot of the miners who were working the uh, gold fields, and uh, this was where you could find saloons and other exciting things along those lines. Uh, when Colorado Springs was founded, it was a dry city because that's what General Palmer, who founded it, wanted to have. He didn't believe in drink. So uh, Old Colorado City, as it's now known, became the wild part of town. It wasn't annexed into Colorado Springs, in fact, until 1917, many years after it had been founded itself. So for a while, it was uh, a territory cap capital only five days before it got moved up to Denver. I'm standing in front of the original log cabin building, somewhat restored, that was for five days the capital of Colorado Territory before Colorado was even a state. Um, old Colorado City, the shopping area is what a lot of people refer to it as when they talk about Old Colorado City, they're talking about coming shopping in these beautiful old brick buildings that go about four or five blocks down here. This is the center of the Colorado, old Colorado City shopping center, shopping district. It's an historic district as well. Uh, these buildings go back over a hundred years now. And this is what, when people think of old Colorado City, this is what they're thinking about. Lots of shopping along here. And all kinds of eclectic shops, um, great dining, um, restaurants, shops of every description. But then just north of there and back towards downtown is the neighborhood with these beautiful old Victorians, even older than the ones up in uh, old, old North End. And this is a very eclectic neighborhood. So there's some very beautiful large homes and some smaller homes. I can pretty much guarantee there are not any two that are alike. There are some new ones that have been built in the last 10 or 15 years that don't look like anything like these, but they're beautiful as well. People love look, living on the west side, having close access to trails, the mountains, and it's just a beautiful neighborhood. A lot of people love uh, old Colorado City. Leaving there, we go south on 21st Street which after a few miles becomes Cresta, and then you'll go past Cheyenne Mountain High School, and then you're in the Cheyenne Mountain School District, one of the highest rated in the state, and we'll get down to the world famous hotel called the Broadmoor, one of the very few five star and five diamond hotels and has been every year for many years. This is just one of their properties. Um, across the street from the hotel, they've got these beautiful townhomes that were built about 20 years ago, and those are for rent as well. Uh, you can stay in them instead of the hotel if you want to. Beautiful, uh, well uh, appointed. You'll have to read their website to get all the details about that. But the hotel or the homes along Lake Avenue, north and south of that, are generally very large, very large. Uh, properties surrounding them as well. So just a beautiful, quiet, upscale neighborhood, uh, probably some of the most expensive homes in the area, 
a lot of them I looked at recently are uh, one and a half million and up. And uh, so it's not for the faint of heart, but it is sure a beautiful neighborhood. And the last one we're gonna cover today. So uh, be sure to uh, subscribe so you can get updates on everything about Colorado Springs. Uh, we'd love to have you write in or call or send a Peregrine Falcon to drop me a message. Either way, I love hearing from you and I hope I can help you out in the future. Bye.